Well, my next job in the spring prep here is I'm, uh, I want to put a battery monitor on my lithium batteries. My normal method is I use this Klein meter and a set of lead, check leads and I go in across the battery terminals and I measure what the voltage is and uh, terminal voltage with them shut off not operating and then Battleborn has a nice chart that you can print off that tells you what the state of charge is based on voltage and for the most part that for the most part that works pretty good uh, but it's really cumbersome and awkward because you got to um, I got to open up my compartment down there and go in with a meter and try to get to the battery terminals and it's hard to reach it really is so um, let's take you know take a look but you know that's the compartment where everything sits and uh, you, know, you, you got to get get in there pretty well to get things connected so it, it's just not simple. Um, so what I've purchased is a, a BMV712 from Victron Energy. Actually, I bought it through the Battleborn battery uh, website. And it comes with a nice meter and uh, voltage sense leads and a cable to hook up the meter to the shunt, which is... That's the shunt that I have to install in the compartment for connections. Now, my only disappointment, I bought this one because it can monitor two batteries and it can monitor the midpoint of a bank. And I thought, hey man, that's really great. But, the problem is that um, this bank has independent charge circuit. Each battery has its own charger. So you can't really monitor the 24-volt pack as a whole because you can't get both chargers, both sets of charger leads um, through this shunt. And I've checked. There's just not a good way because, because the, you have voltage sense leads that go into the shunt, but the grounds are all tied together here. So there's, there's really no alternative um, in wiring. So the way I intend to go at it is I'm going to install it uh, and monitor one battery. The two batteries stay to charge track really close. And since it does have two voltage inputs and one can monitor an auxiliary battery, um, I'm going to uh, monitor the second battery. I think the way it's going to work is it'll see the first battery at 12 volts and it'll see the sec it'll see the whole pack at 24 and consider them as two separate inputs but then I can look at both the whole pack and half and so far in my experience the uh, the voltage of the two cysts, two sides is usually within a tenth of a volt or so and the state of charge is fairly close because they're connected, you know, nose to tail. So I think when I get done, um, reading the state of charge on half the pack will be sufficient to do what I need. Um, one of the other nice things on this one is that it's got Bluetooth built into it, so there's an app for the phone, so I ought to be able to monitor this from outside the boat without having to crawl inside. And uh, anyway, that's my plan. Um, I have looked around, and there are some other designs out there that have uh, shunts from other companies that uh, have shunts with independent leads that would wire up so that you could read the whole pack. Um, but I've already purchased this one before I figured that out. And uh, I want to get the boat in the water, and I want to get this hooked up. So. I'm going to go ahead with the hardware I have and see how it uh, operates. Well, I'm back. I have to say it's been kind of a trying afternoon. Um, I love this Chaparral. This boat's really nice to drive and ride, and it does a lot for the family. But the 
access for maintenance and, and repair is just a pain in the neck. Um, it's hard to get down to the sides of the engine for things because the hatches are kind of small. I'm small enough I can sneak through them, but it, it's tough. And the, like where the batteries are mounted down here is, is a real bear because you can either get an arm in or you can get your head in, but it's really hard to get an arm and a head in. And uh, in any case, I think I spent about four hours out here and uh, installing the uh, battery monitor. Um, it is now complete. And, and as I said earlier, um, I chose to put it on one bank. So it, it's on the front battery or the rear battery, the one that's closest to me. And the, um, the shunt, I had to move the uh, circuit breaker over there. I moved the circuit breaker to the left about an inch. And that gave me enough room for the shunt to go on that panel. Because those are open power connections, and I wanted them. I didn't want them out here in the front where somebody could set something on them. And it's um, it looks like it's kind of difficult to protect that shunt and insulate it. So because um, it's air cooled among other things, and then for some extra safety, I had to turn that second battery around so the terminals were facing this way. Because I really didn't want the terminal uh, ground terminals. Uh, uh, the ground terminal of that battery that close to that terminal uh, you know again it's just keeping some space but I finally managed to get everything together I um, I used a hole saw and mounted the meter here in the front right by the door so I can uh, I can look in and I can check state of charge and voltage and it gives all the parameters so nicer than that is that there's a an app and um, you know right now it's showing a hundred percent it's hard to get the right um, get it so there's not a reflection on it but it'll show the voltage the current the power how much amp hours has been consumed and how much operation is is remaining um, it's got a pretty nice history um, log to it too it'll tell you how much you've used and it'll even chart some of it Alright, so then if I get it um, a little further, if I get it a little further, you'll see down at the bottom where it says starter battery, 27.9. So, so it will, that's the entire pack. So the battery, it's set up right now that it's on the first battery, which is at 13.93, and it will measure state of charge. And the two batteries state of charge ought to track really, really close. They're tied together in series. And I really don't expect them to drift real far. But I can do a sense check off of the, off of the system voltage. And I've even gone up to my little chart here and put the uh, pack voltage alongside. So if, you know, when I get down to, um, say, 20... Five six, you know, you're getting down pretty low with remaining capacity. So, um, so that'll let me do that, and I think that's going to work. You know, I have voltage of the whole pack to make sure that nothing gets too far out of whack, and state of charge, amp hours consumed on the one, and um, and I think that's we're going to give that a try and see how it works. It's, it's about a, you know, it's. Um, a hundred times more information than I had just trying to get in here a couple times of a day with a voltmeter and you know now I can walk over and push a button here and get a good look at it so yeah so we'll see how that works now I'm going to show you a few wiring diagrams this first wiring diagram is is what I wished I could have done but the uh, Victron the BMV uh, does not have this capability, and I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, this one you could do with a link light, a Xantrex link light. And it wasn't in their standard instructions, but I sent a picture of this to the company, and they answered back. Their tech support folks said, yes, this would work just fine. So this one's a little more complicated to wire up, but this would let you uh, monitor both batteries independently 
state of charge for both batteries, and, uh, and charge them independently. What it requires is you have a shunt and you install that between the two batteries. And you know bank one is the first charging loop. It goes from the negative through the charger in here and through the shunt and back to the battery. Bank two, uh, again, you come from the battery here. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to loop the, from the negative side. You go through the shunt, you pick up the charge loop, come to the charger, come back, the positive goes to the other side. So that's your loop back around. So you have a bank two loop and you have a bank one loop. There's actually a bank three, which is for the lead acid, but I left that off this picture just for simplicity. The reason this one works is that this shunt is only a shunt and it has independent current sense leads that go back to the monitor and the calculations are done at the monitor. So you would take from the monitor you need to connect a negative over here you need to connect a positive over here that gives you the whole pack and then the current sense leads off the shunt and in this case again uh, all the current both charge and discharge goes through the shunt and this would give you a full a full coverage uh, state of charge of the 24 volt system as a whole. What I ended up with with the Victron BMV 712 is I am only measuring state of charge of this battery. The shunt ins installs at one end uh, at the negative terminal uh, in the feed line back from the trolling motor. Again, you've got the triple bank charger, so charge loop one starts on the ground side, comes up around here, positive goes back, charges the battery, goes back to the shunt. So that's your charge loop on this battery. When you're drawing on it, of course, all the current comes back through the shunt. But the current is the same whether you have a 12 volt or a 24. Well, there's a power issue, but but the current here is the same as the current here is the same as the current here. It's a, it's a loop. So I've got a 100 amp hour battery and it's going to look at that 100 amp hour battery and how many amps I draw off at 12 volts because that's what it's monitoring. And so it should give me an accurate, uh, an accurate view of this, of this battery. Now the second one, and I labeled it starter because that's what the tool, what the the um, system calls the the. Uh, it's an independent voltage sense. So, for calculating state of charge, you use this loop. You you have a free voltage that you can use. They call it starter in the tool. So you put it across here. So you have a voltage across both batteries. So you can monitor the voltage of the ba voltage bank across. And you can do full state of charge on this one. And because they're in series and tend to equalize, they really ought to be, state of charge ought to be similar between the two batteries. That's my assessment. Uh, I, and it's new enough that I haven't, I haven't been through a number of charge loops to, to verify this, but, but that's the logic is uh, you're, you're going to draw this, you're, you're monitoring half the pack, but the battery, this battery will discharge at the same time this battery discharges. They should both be dead at the same time. And so far with my usage, I'm measuring the monitoring on this one. When I go over here across the pack, I get a voltage that is almost precisely double what I get off of the single battery, is, which is what it should be. So. That's the alternative I've chosen for now, and until it uh, causes me a problem, I'm going to keep using it. So far, so good. Now, number three would be, and the picture's the same except the labels changed, if you use the monitoring voltage to come all the way across here, you can monitor both batteries. So you'll get 24 volts, 27, 28, you know, you'd be 24 volt level. And you can monitor here as a midpoint and get half the pack voltage. And, and you can monitor the state of charge 
of both together. However, because the charging loops are independent, when you come back to charge, this charging loop doesn't go through the shunt, so the shunt won't know any better. So what you would do here is you will discharge the batteries, plug in the charger and bring them up to capacity until they level out and, and stabilize and they are done. And then you can go into this Victron monitor and you can push a button that says, I'm fully charged now, it's at 100%, synchronize me to, to full state of charge. And then it should give you an accurate state of charge as the system discharges. The negative side is that if you came in and wanted to charge them, say, you know, they were half depleted and you only had a few hours and you charged them part way, but not all the way, uh, you, you'd end up in a kind of a no man's land where you'd have the voltages, but you wouldn't have an accurate state of charge measurement. So that's kind of the three ways of looking at it. Uh, I'm going to flip back here for a second to version two. This is what I'm using. And at this point, uh, I've been doing this for a few weeks. I haven't, I'm not depleting the batteries that far because I don't have any hours on it. These batteries run a very long time. So, uh, you know, I'll report back later on on how that goes. But for now, that's my plan.